Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. And this is going to be my end of month October wrap up. October I managed to read a total of 12 books super excited about that I had several books on TBR and I think I only missed like four or five of them hey that's good <laughs> so I'm excited I've already done a mid-month wrap-up I will link that in the card if you have not seen it we still got for six books I think to talk about in this video today but first I want to do like a wrap up here of how I did for Katie's readathon the journal through the bible readathon for Christian fiction and yeah I want to do like a final overall wrap up of what I read for each prompt so the first question in her prompts were where are you going and I picked the promised land and that is a book you promised to read y'all that was you already know a voice in the wind so it happened this was also the buddy read and I was gonna read this in September but I never got to it so that's why I read it in October anyway but hey this book it you know you'll hear all my thoughts in this video um like cohesive thoughts instead of just my crazy emotions <laughs> from the vlogs but uh yes yeah, so that's what I picked for that uh question number two who are you gonna meet and I had several so so 2a we're gonna say Jesus food or drink on the cover Dog Days of Summer is what I chose for it. Uh, it had those funny dogs and the hot dogs. <laughs> I was dying. That cover so good. Uh, then I had 2B was Joseph, A Book of Many Colors. And that was Oath of the Brotherhood. Uh, just because, y'all, it had just some really great colors in here. Y'all can see. Then I had two, what I'm going to call 2C is Daniel, Animal on the cover. That is going to be... The Secrets of Ember Wild, because we had this beautiful horse on the cover. So, got that one done. And then we had 2D, Esther, which is a royalty. And I classify that as within these gilded halls. So, so that was everything for question two. That's all the people I met in the read -along, I guess. And then question number three was Witness an Event. And um, I chose David and Goliath, a book over 400 pages. And that ended up being heirlooms by Sandra Bird which we're going to talk about in this video prompt number four was something has happened uh so let's see be swallowed by a fish a hard to swallow tough topic book and uh this is not on my original TBR but hey TBR who you already know I mean after you read number one of what's in the wind you got to pick up the two so that's what happened so we can say that this because these do have very tough topics these first two books do um they're very hard and just heartbreaking but also uh faith filled and encouraging and redemptive story beautiful ending absolutely adored it so you'll hear more of my thoughts here in a minute uh I'm getting ahead of myself and then uh Prompt number five, how do you escape? That was reader's choice. So I had this one on the list, uh, Where the Blue Sky Begins by Katie Poner. And I'm, I just started this book, so I didn't I didn't get to finish it. So um, we're going to say A Midnight Dance by Joanna Davis Napolitano because that was not one that I planned to pick up. But uh, I picked it up so I could read The Lost Melody and not be spoiled for it. And so we'll just say that. So yeah, the readathon re went really well. And I managed to get everything read for at least each prompt. So that was good. And then um, the elephant in the room is the Christmas decor. And <laughs> I know. But you know, I am pre-filming for Vlogmas, y'all. So I had to. Now, I ain't gonna put my tree up for a while. It'll probably be... I'm still an early tree person, but not this early. Um... Probably be the second or third week of, of November. But I'm going to film that too for Vlogmas. So I may do it earlier. We'll see. I, I need, your girl's got to get pre-filming done or it ain't going to happen. Um, yeah. So that's why these are up. It's fine. After Halloween, I go into Christmas mode anyway. I love Thanksgiving. But hey. All right. Now that, I, now that that's out the way. Because <laughs> I was waiting on the comments. You got Christmas to go <laughs> I was waiting on it. I just waiting on it, y'all. Uh, it's fine. But, yeah, that's what happened. 
So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into all these book reviews. First book I wanna talk about is Heirlooms by Sandra Bird. I gave this three and a half stars, rounded up to four on Goodreads. I am gonna be looking at my notes, so please excuse um, as usual, but this is a multi-generational story surrounding Helen DeVries and she's a Navy widow who opens her home to refugee Choi Yunhee. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but that, that's what I think it is. Um, and she, both Choi and Helen's husbands have passed away in the war, the, um, like in the Korean War time period. And so this is a dual timeline story. Uh, we follow Helen and Choi's story together back in the 1950s. And we also follow their granddaughters in present day, which is Cassidy and Grace. And Cassidy and Grace are kind of digging into the past of their grandparents because Helen has passed away. And one thing that she requested was for the granddaughters to come together and go through her old things so that they could learn of everything about their past. And everything just kind of takes off from there as the granddaughters are trying to unearth all of their family secrets. They find heirlooms, letters, this box of all these memories, all these things, and everything takes off from there. Um, I really like this story. Overall, I love learning about the family in this, um, but first off, I wish there was more faith content in this. There was some good faith, but I was wishing for a little bit more, and I struggled with some of the topics in this book, personally, that were triggering for me. Like, I just struggled with the reading process here. Uh, I'm going to tell you the trigger warnings for this in this in this video, so if you don't want to see the trigger warnings, I don't know that it, I guess it would be spoilers. I'm going to just say it because I feel like it should be known before you go into this book, okay? Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to set the trigger warnings now. So if you don't want to know, skip ahead maybe 30 seconds. But we have loss of a family member, infertility, child, child loss, grief, and mentions of mistreatment of children with special needs, how those children were treated in the 1950s. It was in detail for me and I think it's important that we mention these trigger warnings uh, because this content honestly affected me in a tough way um, especially since I am a mother of a child with autism I was just having a hard time I tell my friends like girls this is hard um, I don't know and I normally am not like that but when it deals with children it's hard and so this is still a really good book, but I want you all to know those trigger warnings if you are wanting to know that. Like before you read this book, I think it's important to know that. Even though some of the content was hard to read at certain times, I still really appreciated this story because we had some really great advocacy for children with special needs, people in general with special needs, Down syndrome and autism. It means a lot to me as an autism mom to see these characters in this book being brought to light and it being made aware of how they were treated in the 50s versus today and how we should be treating them today and getting them help and all of these things and all their needs to meet their needs. Um, but in general, many of the details from the past were very hard for me to read. But overall, I really like the dual timeline here too. I feel like they were very connected well. Um, I also really like the friendship between Helen and Yoonhee. That's what they called her in the book uh, by her last name. Uh, she really went out of her way to help her in so many ways and it was a beautiful friendship So if you want a story that has like a beautiful female friendship This is a really good one and also has a great family aspect a historical side Also, I think if you're someone who loves like Korean traditions Korean culture You would love this book. Also, if you really like like gardening and flowers There is so much going on here with that and honestly one of my favorite parts in this was how they were talking about party lines <laughs> it was awesome it was just awesome like I know a lot about telecommunications so it was funny it was hilarious <laughs> I was dying so I was like every time they pick up the phone people be listening <laughs> I was like okay so yeah that was great to see um like the, the nosy neighbors listening in on the party lines that was cool oh so, yeah overall this is just a really enjoyable story big emotional impact but again I still was missing some things from it and some of the content was hard for me so I give it three and a half rounded it up to four on Goodreads though so yeah I definitely think this is written well as well this very great writing style and easy to get into yeah okay so get ready you got your drinks y'all got your coffee I mean what do I say 
but first coffee, right? Um, <laughs> y'all get ready for this. Okay, get you a snack, because this is going to be a little lengthy, and I have to look at my notes, because I, my mind cannot comprehend what I want to say, so there's that, a voice in the wind, a voice in the wind. If you've not seen my blog, I'm a link it but be ready for some emotions. It's spoiler free, and this will be too, but if you've read it, feel free to send me a message on Instagram. <laughs> so many of you have messaged me on Instagram, and just based on my vlog alone, y'all were like, girl, this emotions, I gotta read this, and Bailey, girl, you've been messaging me. <laughs> like, she's still reading it right now. Miriam picked it back up again. I mean, we all just love this book so much. So many have picked it back up my heart absolutely love this so where do I begin I give this five stars obviously it's a beautiful faith filled I literally finished this so quick I, it took me a little bit to get through like the first 200 pages I'll say I was just reading a little bit each day but once some stuff started happening y'all I was hooked I read the rest of it in day I think I went from like page 200 to the end in, in one day and then I picked up this one and I read this in a full 24 hours. Okay. This is all about Hadassah and her faith journey. She is a Christian girl and they're living in Jer Jerusalem at the beginning of the story. And it's so sad because the Romans are coming in and they are killing Jews. And if they found that you were a Christian, that'd be really bad. It was even worse than if you were a Jew. So she is like a hidden Christian in a way because she's not talking about Jesus, but she is mixed in with all the other Jewish people in Jerusalem. They had went there for Passover. And this is like in the Acts timeline, like post Jesus. And so there's a lot of like people out there um, like, for example, we have John the Baptist in this story. Love that so much. People preaching the gospel of Jesus. At the beginning of the story, the Romans are coming in. They are killing the Jews. And her and her family are, it's severe starvation. The very first chapter will grip you. You will just cry. And I remember I was trying to listen to this on audio. And I was doing laundry. And I listened to it. And I was like, wait a minute. I had to stop and go pick up the book. Because there was just... I couldn't just listen. I had to have this in my hands to like anticipate what was happening. You know what I mean? And so basically Hadassah's whole family is killed. Her mother and sister. This is all within the first chapter. So no spoilers. But Hadassah's family is basically killed. She's the only living person left of her family. Her dad, he left to go preach the gospel. He never come back. Brother was killed by Romans that like stampeded in her home. And the Lord spared her and her sister. Her mother had passed away from starvation. But soon after, her her sister in the first chapter as well passes away from starvation. Adassa is left all alone and she ends up being sold into slavery as a house slave for the Romans in a Roman family. And so she is transported to Rome to serve this Roman family. And everything kind of takes off from there. She meets this family. And while she's in the care of this family, we have Marcus and his parents and his sister living there. His parents are Phoebe, and I'm listening his name, the dad right, <laughs> right off, uh, Decimus. <laughs> okay, so that was his name. And then we had Julia, who was Marcus's sister. So that's the family aspect here. And everyone just comes to really enjoy the presence of Hadassah because she just truly embraces the love of God and just shows the love and compassion of God in this family. She just shows so much respect to them in every circumstance. And she is praying and Marcus sees her praying. There's all these things. They are seeing her as a woman of the Lord, whether they know it or not, they are. Then questions and, and discussions start happening. Bible stories and all these things starts telling these stories of God's word to this family, whether they are soaking it all in or not, hey, she is telling this story of the Lord to the Romans. And she really almost like becomes a part of their family very quickly. She's still a slave, but you really just start seeing her infiltrating this family and be just like 
really impacting them in such a way, especially Marcus. He starts to, he can't stop thinking about her, that kind of thing. Um, he is a very self-centered person in the beginning there. Uh, so is his sister, Julia, which Hadassah is pretty much her slave. So she is overseeing everything with the sister, Julia. And there's a lot of stuff happening with Julia and her life. Y'all, it's insane. So yeah, I know I'm ran rambling on, but Hadassah really is just a true character that shows us what it truly means to be a Christian woman. And she went through hard things. And her brother told her before he died in the very first chapter, remember the Lord. And she did. And it was so emotional. I'm getting emotional to think about it. It was just a beautiful story. Francine really knows how to grip you. And Bailey messaged me, girl, I'm all telling them right now. I gotta tell them. So the preface, I didn't even read this. She messaged me and I was like, I should have read this. I always read the intro from the author. So my main desire when I started reading Christian fiction was to find answers to personal questions and to share those answers in story form with others. Now I want so much more. I yearn for the Lord to use my stories in making people thirst for his word. I hope that reading Hadassah's story will make you hunger for the real world, real word, Jesus Christ, the bread of life. I pray that you will finish my book and pick up the Bible with a new excitement and anticipation of a real encounter with the Lord himself. And I thought, amen, that is exactly what happens in this book. You get so close to the Lord by reading this book. I felt so much more closer and drawn to God by after reading these books. I wanted to pick up my Bible. I wanted to get back in the Word. Like, there was just so much in this. And it really made you think of, take a step back and think about your own life. How good we have it here, y'all. That's the main thing. And just, how can I serve others forgiveness of others i mean that's in but <laughs> the forgiveness in both of these books i mean i'm kind of like talking about this as a whole here but the forgiveness that is shown in this book in this in this these first two books wow i mean so i don't need to say much more except read these books i will say a couple extra things here uh we are following a side character atreides in this book um, and I think his character is mostly in book three, so uh, I'll read it at some point, but these do wrap up very nicely together. You, this ends on a cliffhanger. You're going to need this. You're going to need it, okay, honey? Um, but I also want to mention a couple other things because several have mentioned the violence in this book, and I understand there is some violence in this. I wouldn't recommend it for like a young teenager or anything like that. Um, definitely more of an adult book. Honestly, to me, this is like a biblical fiction story that is portrayed what much of what happens in the Bible itself. While I think we should all be aware of the content, I also understand that this, it doesn't even come close truly to the Bible itself. I think this book just does a phenomenal job of really showing us what happened during that time to people and how people were persecuted for their faith and just how can we serve others in the Lord, be strong in our faith and encouragement. This was great encouragement for our faith, you guys. Like, this touched my heart. It draws you near to the Lord. And we just truly see what it means to forgive and serve others in these and what it means to be a Christian and a believer of the Lord. And forever in my heart. I love these so much. So yeah, book two, I don't have much more to say other than it just continued on. Thankfully picks up right where everything left off. Loved our main guy's um, journey. I'm not going to say any names, but I love the guy's journey in this story uh, that we followed throughout the whole story. I just, it was a great redemption story and we had some great um, endings for a lot of characters. So there was some salvation in the Lord and it was just a beautiful. And so, y'all, I talked how long about this, but it was worth it. Okay, so I'm gonna try to be quick, but okay, let's go. The next book I read was The Bookshop of Secrets by Molly Rushmeyer. It's her debut story, and it's all about finding this these lost secrets, uh, family history, restoration in the Lord. The story centers around Hope Sparrow. She has been pretty much running away from her past and she doesn't stay anywhere too long, but everything leads her to Wenishan Falls, uh, where she goes to a local bookshop called Dusty Jackets. 
Love the name of that. Uh, she goes there because she needs to get these special classic books from her mother who passed away recently. And in these books, they're supposed to have like secrets to either a family treasure or um, like her family's history, all this stuff. And she ends up getting there and the books are not there. And it's like, where are these books? She goes on this hunt to find the books. Unfortunately, nobody knows what the books are. The, there, this does deal with a character in the story. The owner of the bookshop um, does have dementia. So I wanted to mention that. So, you know, maybe he had the books. He doesn't know where they are. Um, there's also a mystery of, did someone take them? Did someone know about this mysterious treasure? Can we figure this out? So she's up meeting this guy, Ronan, who is the grandson of the bookshop owner. And they end up working together, kind of forming a bond, a relationship here to find out everything about the past. Where are these books? Things start going missing really quick. Even they start trying to uncover all the secrets and everything goes on from there. And so what I loved about this book is the bookshop details were great. It's like an old rundown little bookshop. You got a lot of details about it. We had some really great references to classic books. That was my most favorite part about this. We had a cat named Fitzwilliam. Fitzwilliam for Mr. Darcy in Pride and Prejudice. That's the first thing. We had references to Jane Eyre, uh, C.S. Lewis, Tolkien. I loved everything. At one point, they talked about how somebody was acting like Smeagol or Gollum, sorry. And I just lost it. It was just a really, like, the, the literary references were really good in this. I had a lot of fun with that. But also, at the same time, this is very emotional and engaging. Trigger warnings, this does deal with PTSD, human trafficking, because our main character is a victim of human trafficking for like 10 years of her life. And she is try just trying to recover in her new life. And there's no details really in depth about that. You, can, you know what happened to her, but it's really off page. But I want to mention the topic there. I really appreciated how the author handled that. Um, we had some really good faith content in here as well. So I don't know if I said this already, but PTSD, panic attacks. I really liked the guy Ronan that she was with. He was just like, he valued chivalry, kindness for um, women. And I just loved like he would like want to open the door for her or just do things for her. And it was something that she wasn't used to because of her past and she didn't know how to take. And it was just really great to see that for her. I, I liked him a lot. I really liked their relationship and how they were getting to know each other. She's very closed off because of her past, but she's trying to open up and be restored through the Lord. And he was just a true gentleman and she's just trying to learn how to begin again. And he was patient with her and everything. So it was just a really good story. I gave it four out of five stars. I'm definitely gonna be on the lookout for more by this author. So the next book I read was Anna Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. I'm so glad that Mitzi and Elizabeth have made this <laughs> more Montgomery challenge this fall it has been such an encouragement because y'all i love this so much it's a new favorite i can't wait to read more Anne. i'm already reading another Anne um story in november this y'all <laughs> about through it anna green gables y'all okay let's go um i'm so glad i read this month and story like she just has such an excitement for life and she brings a sense of joy and happiness to I think everyone who would read this, um, especially like I can think about my younger self, little Amanda would have been just the little girl at me was happy reading this. Okay. Um, I just adore her imagination and her heart. Um, she just, I said that I feel like Anne just lives off the page. She does like everything. Every time I read something by her, I was smiling, laughing. Um, she was just funny and, and excited about life and just, and so everything about her was in my heart. I loved her so much. This beautiful little girl who just wanted to have a family and be loved. <sighs> my heart. Okay. So if you don't know what this is about, y'all, this is set in the late 19th century. Uh, it's the story of Matthew and Marilla. They are brother and sister. They've not been married before, but they are in their 50s and 60s. And so they are living together on their family farmland and they are needing a little boy, 10 or 11 years old. 
to be adopted to help take care of things on the farm because they're getting up in age and what <laughs> what happens is not good so they go matthew goes to adopt a little boy and instead what happens he gets Anne. They, there's a mistake and he gets Anne instead. And so he doesn't tell her right off that he takes her home. Marilla's like, who is this little girl? We were supposed to have a boy. Anne is so distraught. <laughs> so um, everything is so sad for Anne. And it's just sad because she's talking about how no one ever wanted her before. And it's just, she really pulls at your heartstrings. And she's already told a lot of this to Matthew before they even get home. So he's kind of developed a little, you know, soft spot in his heart for her. And when he gets there, Mar Marilla and him are talking. She works her imaginative magic on her as well. And they end up keeping her. And it's just a beautiful story of all about Anne's life and her imagination and just the kind of shenanigans and adventures that she gets into. This simple mistake brought this a beautiful 11 year old girl into their lives and their lives were not the same for sure. They were just, you could just see how she really impacted everyone in Green Gables. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful story. So I can't wait to read more of Anne's stories. I'll, I'll be here for it. Okay. And I really want to watch some Anne adaptations. I tried to find the one from the eighties. I can't find it streaming anywhere. So I may just have to buy the DVDs with Megan follow, follow something. So I uh, was it follows whatever y'all tell me. I've been trying to find it, but I don't see it streaming anywhere. So I'm, I almost bought it and then I didn't. And then the price went up on Amazon for the DVDs. And I was like, well, I'll just wait and see. So maybe I'll get it. Uh, here in the next few months. Maybe there'll be like a Black Friday deal or something and I can get it, but I really want to watch it. I watched the trailer for it and I need to watch it, y'all. So, yeah. Five out of five stars if I didn't say that for sure. The final book that I read, I listened to it on audio and I actually talked about this in my November TBR, but I went ahead and listened to it already. So, I will just pick something up in place of it. But uh, that was Kind is the New Classy by Candace Cameron Bure. I love Candace Cameron. She just exudes so much joy and Christian faith. I love her. She is a great Christian woman and a, an influencer, great Christian influencer online. I just, I love her devotionals and her Instagram content. She's just such a, a wonderful, wonderful celebrity character, you'll say, um, and very inspirational. And so I listened to this on audiobook and really just enjoyed the time that I spent listening to it because it didn't feel like I was listening to a book. I felt like I was just listening to her talk and that it just, it went by so fast. As a Christian, I truly appreciated this book. I could just, I related to a lot of what she was talking about. Um, she's just kind of showing us how what you feel like is obvious answers to how to be kind to people, right? But sometimes we just overlook that in our everyday to day life. And it's just like those reminders that we need. And she used a lot of scripture uh, and just a lot of things tied back to God and everything pointing back to Jesus in our kindness, even when we don't agree with others and how to just have those conversations that may be hard, but in kind ways and even how to be kind to ourselves. Just, I really loved how she talked about the Lord in this book. Uh, I gave this book five stars and I think anything that she writes, I will pick up a great audio book. I love if she narrates it. I love when a uh, nonfiction is narrated by the author. It just makes the experience so much better. She also talked a lot about like her struggles with social media and it's insane the kind of criticism she gets. I'm like, that's not even something people are just cruel. Like that's just crazy. It's not even something that the people should be criticizing her for like her clothes or her family or things like that. It's so ridiculous. And so uh, what I call the keyboard warriors of the internet, I just, I can't imagine all the pressure that she has to have from that. And she talks about trying not to look at comments, but then like her time at The View, we learned a little bit about it. Her time filming Fuller House uh, for Netflix and just, a lot about her family as well. So I just, I love this. Um, she talked to just about how to be kind in every circumstance and pointing back to Jesus through everything. It was just uplifting and I think it shows us truly how to be kind as a Christian person and uh, I think everyone would get something out of it. So yeah, I highly recommend it.
So that's it for this video. These videos take so long, but I always love filming them so I can just tell you about all the books that I'm reading. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments below. Have you read any of these books? Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, all the good things, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, y'all.